Often, if you talk to EV enthusiasts, electric cars which are built on existing ICE platforms are a big no-no. But Volvo, with their first electric car, the XC40 Recharge, seem to have put together a package with little to no compromise, and it's also twice as fast. Hello Electroheads, I'm Tish, and in today's video, we're gonna be taking a closer look at the Volvo XC40 Recharge. So if that sounds good, please keep watching. And if you like electric car news and electric mobility, then make sure you're subscribed to Electroheads and turn on that bell to never miss a notification from us. Okay, so I talk about twice as fast. Is that an exaggeration? Well, no, it's actually not. Behind me is the twin motor XC40 Recharge. It has a motor on the front and the rear, which together produce 402 brake horsepower. In fact, each motor on either end is more powerful than any ICE version of the XC40. And that means that this car's sprint is quite eye-watering. However, if the power isn't the most important thing to you, then they do also offer an entry-level single motor car, which has around 230 brake horsepower. And this is sure to be a much better package for most people, which is much more affordable. Now I say affordable in quotation marks because even the entry-level Volvo XC40 is quite expensive. Okay, so let's get into it. With the Volvo badge comes a lot of expectations. People expect a Volvo to be practical, well-built and safe. And luckily, the XC40 Recharge follows in the brand's existing footsteps. And I think that's the reason they chose to use an existing platform. It reassures customers that despite the fact that they're changing to electric, it still has a familiarity about it and it's still very classic Volvo. The one thing that stands it aside from the petrol models is the front grille. Because there's no need to cool the engine, you've got this blanked off front design. Familiar design elements include these LED front headlamps, which Volvo describe as a Thor's hammer design. You can kind of see that here. My test car rolls on 20 inch alloy wheels as this is the higher spec performance model. And I do think they give a slightly hard ride. Going for the entry level 19 inch wheels will give you that soft Volvo feel which is so familiar. If you're wondering whether your Volvo will be good off road, unfortunately the electric car doesn't have the ground clearance of the ICE models. And that's mainly because those batteries are in the floor of the Volvo. The official stats of the single motor 69 kilowatt hour car are a respectable 231 horsepower and a competitive 263 miles of WLTP claimed range. The entry level core model will set you back just under £45,000, equivalent to the entry level e-tron and mid-spec ENYAC. If you want the punchy twin motor 78 kilowatt hour car with an impressive 402 brake horsepower, it will cost you a further £10,000, with the cheapest plus model costing just over £56,000. However, depending on what specification you go for, the four wheel drive doesn't lose you any range like in some other competitors. The electric XC40 does unfortunately lose out on 47 litres of space over the ICE models. However, that doesn't mean it's not practical. Inside here, you'll still have 452 litres of space, and that's more than you'll find on the Kia e Nero, but just slightly less than on the Volkswagen ID4. But the Volvo has a trump card, and that's practicality. There's so many thoughtful little details to the boot that makes living with it really easy. For example, there's actually a little handle on the boot floor. Open it up and you've got some additional storage. But you can also flip this backwards and then it creates almost a boot divider, meaning your items in the back won't slide around as much. And if you wanna keep some of your shopping upright, you can also use these handy hooks provided. How great is that? As well as that practical and functional storage in the back of the car, you also have some additional storage under the bonnet, which includes 31 litres of storage space, which is perfect for popping your cables in. The only problem is the practicality around this front boot 
is not particularly functional. For a starter, it's great to store your cables, but then your charge port's around the back, so it's not particularly practical. And then there's just opening it. You have to open it like you would do conventionally with a bonnet. So you have the lever, which is on the driver's side. The only problem is, is it just all feels a little bit clunky. Although I'm never gonna complain about some extra storage. The XC40 is Volvo's smallest SUV, but saying that, there's still enough space for most small families. In fact, I've got a decent amount of legroom and a nice amount of headroom, despite having the panoramic sunroof that comes on this top spec model. Storage is good too. I've got a couple of cup holders inside this armrest, and I've also got some storage down the side of the seats, which is just as well because the door cards are not particularly large. I've also got nets on the back seats and I've got heated seats on this top spec model and two USB-C charge ports. The main issue with going for a car which is designed on an ICE platform is that I do still have a transmission tunnel and that means that people sitting in the middle will e either have to have little legs or they'll have to straddle it which is a bit of a shame and does make other competitors of cars slightly pull ahead. Volvo interiors are some of my favourite on the market. They feel so plush and well built, but they're so very practical. And the electric version of the XC40 is no different. Practicality is huge in this car. I've got some massive door bins, and I'm talking massive, you can fit tons of stuff in here. Liar! But they're also felt lined as well, so things don't roll around. You've also got an armrest with storage underneath, but you've also got a removable bin, which is really, really handy. I've actually been popping things in this all week. It's so good. And make sure that you don't litter the rest of the cabin. You've got your usual two cup holders, which have got the little pokey in parts, which hold your cups in place. You've also got some storage down the center, which has a wireless phone charging pad on this higher spec model. But then you've got this little part here, which if you pop out, you can pop your phone in the middle there and it stands upright. How handy is that? On top of all else, you've also got this handy little hook in the glove box, which you can pop your bag on. How cool is that? Cool. Most of the Volvo's controls and settings can all be found on this central touchscreen, which sometimes is a bit of a negative. But Volvo, along with their partner company Polestar, have got it spot on. This is really simple and easy to use. Even with your climate control dials on here, I haven't found it too much of an issue. In fact, whenever I've needed to find anything, I can get there almost in under 20 seconds. There's also a physical home button which always gets you to your main settings nice and quickly. You have a few shortcut buttons which include the volume button and some quick clear for your windscreens. You've got things like your heated seats, heated steering wheel and also your Bluetooth found on here. Now Volvo actually runs on a Google system which means it doesn't get Apple CarPlay or Android Auto as standard, which is a little bit of a shame, or at least Apple CarPlay. I mean, a typical Apple person pretending like nothing of Android ever matters. But I do find that as my safety net. As soon as I get into a car, I plug my Apple phone in and I use Apple CarPlay. So it has been a little bit alien to me to get used to this Google system. But actually, I may be converted because it works seriously well. Get me directions to a charging station. There's G-R-I-D-S-E-R-V-E -E electric forecourt one mile away. Once you start your navigation, it's really clear and easy to see. You've got this great big screen in the middle. But if your passenger is playing around with your central touchscreen, then your directions are still on your digital instrument cluster. This car doesn't have a head-up display, but because of that really clear, big display, I don't really need it. All versions of the Volvo also come with a rear-view camera. On this top-spec model, you get a really clear 360-degree parking view, which is super handy for parking the Volvo. Run the battery flat and recharging at home from a standard 7.4 kilowatt wall box will take a full 12 hours for this twin motor model and around an hour less for the single motor. It's also capable of charging up to 150 kilowatts from a public rapid charger, meaning a top 
top up from 10 to 80% capacity takes just over 30 minutes. One of the first things that you need to get used to when jumping in the Volvo XC40 is there's no start button. As soon as you're sitting in it with your seatbelt fastened, you can pop it into drive and pull away. This feels a bit weird to begin with and you can find yourself rooting around for a start button as you start and stop. But once you get used to it, it's absolutely amazing. I really like it. And it means you can jump in the car and really quickly pull away. Again, super convenient. The second thing is the range. When you look at the range dial, it only reads in percentage. I found this a little bit frustrating to start with, but actually I quickly knew how to change it. So you go to home and you can actually click on um, a range function and then it will show you how many miles you have left. This is pretty quick to get to, but you do need to know how to find it. In fact, I think it's one of the key things that you need to find out first when you get in the Volvo. I did also read online that you can use the voice function to tell you how many miles, but this seems to happen when I do it. How much range is left in my car? You can drive for about 111 miles with the remaining charge. Okay, she's getting used to me now. For a while she was telling me how many miles it was to get to the range, so I'm glad we've ironed that out now. But both of these things make it quite simple. And you know what? I've gotten used to the percentage and I think I prefer it. I tend to watch it less. When you've actually got the mileage reading, you kind of watch it go down, 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 and it makes you feel a bit more range anxiety. When you've got just that percentage, strangely, it doesn't make you feel quite so worried. Talking of range, as I mentioned, the Volvo XC40 gets around 250 miles, and I found this to be pretty accurate, actually. It's probably closer to 220, 215. But compared to cars which say they're going to do 215 and actually do 100, 150, it's quite impressive. It's probably helped by the fact that the Volvo has a regenerative one pedal braking mode. There is only two options available for regenerative braking though, on or off, and there's no paddles on the steering wheel to turn it up or down. You can access it by the settings or I found it's easier to ask the Google assistance once more turn off one pedal drive okay turning off one pedal drive and this is the much quicker way of accessing it it is an actual one pedal drive as well like the Nissan Leaf it will bring you to a complete stop I really enjoy this one pedal driving but it does take some getting used to and you'll find you're a bit jerky to begin with but once you get used to it, it actually makes the Volvo so, so easy to drive. And when it's gone, you miss it. Alexa, turn on one pedal drive. Oh, no, you're not Alexa, are you? Hello, Google. Turn on one pedal drive. Sure, turning on one pedal drive. Volvo is well known for their soft and supple suspension. And though the electric XC40 isn't uncomfortable, it's definitely a firmer setup than I was expecting, but it's probably largely down to its weight. This car comes in at 2.2 tonnes or around that anyway, and that kind of weight is difficult to hide. It's probably not helped by the fact that this is rolling on 20 inch wheels. I think if you opted for the 19s, it would be slightly softer. Let's talk about that power. 402 brake horsepower in an SUV. It is so much fun. I've seen a lot of people say that the power out of this car is a little bit unnecessary. I mean, let's face it, the 0 to 62 time is under five seconds, which is crazy. And okay, it might be unnecessary for certain people who don't really want a fast car setup. Say it's just a family car for poodling around town, then yes, you probably don't need 402 brake horsepower. But if you're somebody that likes their power, that's possibly come out of a performance car, but still wants a car which is gonna get their pulse racing, then this could be the one for you, because actually, stick your foot down, and the power that comes from this car is eye-watering. <coughs> I'm trying to think if there's anything I dislike about the drive of this car and 
I'm coming up blank. I absolutely love it. The assist systems are fantastic. It's comfortable enough while still feeling quite engaging because of the setup and the nice weighted steering. You've also got that one pedal drive, which makes it really relaxing. I've got a great adaptive cruise control system. I'm really struggling. This car is just a dream to drive. existing Volvo owner who's thinking about going electric, then you probably don't need much convincing as to why the XC40 offers a fantastic package. However, if you're comparing this car to other similar vehicles which offer a similar package, the XC40 is going to look expensive. That performance is certainly tempting, but when you're comparing the lower spec single motor car to other vehicles which are on the market, you are paying a premium for those brand values. But I do think they're worth it. It's a really nice car. It offers just enough range for most people, lots of safety and lots of specification. I really hope you've enjoyed this video today. If you have, please go ahead and give it a massive thumbs up. If you wanna see more car reviews from me and more electric mobility news, then make sure you subscribe to the Electroheads channel. Until next time guys, see you later.